Recording in progress.
Thumbs up in the room. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Matthew Cameron, and I'll be moderating the event. Uh, we have several uh, esteemed speakers here uh, today joining us, including the Honorable Christia Freeland, Deputy Prime Minister of Canada and Minister of Finance, joining us via Zoom from Fredericton, New Brunswick. Good afternoon, Deputy Prime Minister. The Honorable Sandy Silver, Premier of the Yukon, joining us from Dawson City, Yukon. The Honorable Ahmed Hussein, Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, and Minister Responsible for the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, here in person, along with the Honorable Jeannie McLean, Minister of Education for the Yukon. We also have Larry Bagnall, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Economic Development and Official Languages, and Member of Parliament for the Yukon. We will go through our series of speakers uh, and then go to uh, a round of questions and answers with media that are here in person and on the line. And to start things off, I will hand it over to Member of Parliament for Yukon, Larry Bagnall. Hello, everyone. Dunjay, Dreamqueasy, Shilakat. Very exciting to be here on the traditional territory of the Kwan Dun First Nation and the Tonquatch and Council for this exciting announcement. And it's great to be here with all of you today in person, and I want to thank Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland, my colleague, and my colleague Ahmed Hussein, Minister of Family, Children, uh, and Social Development, who will speak uh, after me, Premier Sandy Silver, and Yukon Government of Minister of Education, uh, Jeannie McLean, for joining us today. Um, Premier Silver, you know, we have uh, so many, you have so many, share so many of our values of our government. We've done lots of great announcements and cooperation and programs and initiatives together. And this is another uh, great day. And Jeannie, you know, you're just uh, new in your portfolio, but you've already done so much in such a short time, so that's very exciting. And those of you who were here yesterday when we made the uh, biggest announcement in, housing announcement in recent uh, Yukon history, um, I mentioned the fact that, uh, uh, that uh, in two years, when there's 338 MPs in the country, it, it's very uh, seldom you get access to a minister. You're very lucky if you do. But as I mentioned yesterday, we've had uh, Minister Hussein three times, not only for the biggest announcement, but two more big housing announcements within the last six months. And this will be your fourth time today, right after I finish speaking. So that's exciting. And if it's hard to get a minister, you can imagine how hard it is to get the deputy prime minister. And this is actually the third time uh, Yukon's had access again to the deputy prime minister. She did uh, round tables as finance minister with uh, tourism, in our two biggest industries, tourism, and another one with mining. And now uh, today she's joining us for uh, this big announcement, which she's had a really uh, big role to play. So this past year has been difficult. Uh, for everyone, but parents, especially women, have carried a heavy burden. The closing of schools and daycares in this past year has negatively affected women's ability to work. The pandemic has also shone a light on how access to childcare supports children, families, and the economy. It has also laid bare how the current system is leaving too many children and families behind. Childcare is necessary social infrastructure, just as important as roads or other types of infrastructure. And the, re the return on investment is undisputed. As we begin to reopen the economy from coast to coast to coast, we have an opportunity to build an inclusive, high quality, affordable and flexible early learning and childcare system across Canada that ensures that every child has the best start in life, including right here in the Yukon. Uh, when this, uh, just one last comment, when this uh, year's budget came out uh, from the first woman finance minister in Canada's history, 740 pages, um, I've never seen anything comparable. It had so many initiatives and changes to improve the lives of Canadians. But the one that Yukon families have approached me the most on and are most excited about and will have the most help for them is the, uh, the tremendous support for childcare in uh, early learning. For, so for that reason, I'd like to introduce my friend and colleague uh, for his fourth major uh, uh, 
initiative for Yukoners, involvement initiative for Yukoners, uh, Minister Hussein. Thank you so much, Larry, for that kind introduction. Hello, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. I'd also like to join you in acknowledging that we're gathered on the lands of the Kwanlin uh, Dun First Nation. Thank you to uh, Premier Silver for, uh, for, for, for being here and for being such a strong partner uh, with our government to deliver for you, Connors. And thank you to Minister McLean uh, for working so closely with me to uh, make today possible. And I want to uh, pay particular tribute and a heartfelt uh, gratitude to Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, uh, colleague and friend, Christia Freeland. Uh, Minister, uh, Christia, it's amazing uh, to, to have you here today. And, uh, you know, it, it's in large part to uh, your efforts why we're here today. And today would simply not have been possible without your uh, prioritization of early learning and childcare, and for that I will always be thankful. I have to start by saying also that it is really great to be here in person. The last 14 months uh, have been incredibly challenging for uh, Canadians from coast to coast to coast, including right here in the Yukon. And um, I, can't thank, uh, I can't think of a better way to mark uh, this, uh, this return to, uh, uh, to, to, to in-person events than uh, coming together to uh, to talk about early learning and childcare. Yesterday, I was in Whitehorse announcing uh, 87 new affordable housing units for Yukoners and an investment of a federal investment of $22.2 million. So we are doing everything that we can to deliver for Yukoners. Je commencerai par dire ce que tout le monde ici pense. Nous avons besoin d'un système pan-canadien d'apprentissage et de garde de jeunes enfants qui n'y laissent personne de côté et nous en avons uh, besoin maintenant. And I'll start by saying what we're all thinking about. We need a Canada-wide early learning and childcare system and we need it now. And it is no secret that raising a family can be, an expen is, can be expensive at the best of times. But during this pandemic, families have had particular challenges that they've faced particularly with the respect to access to affordable and high-quality childcare. And with the remoteness of certain communities in our country, like in the Yukon, things like groceries and learning materials can cost significantly more than they should. And the COVID-19 pandemic has simply exacerbated those existing challenges. We know that the early learning and childcare sector has undergone tremendous challenges in the last 14 months. Childcare centers have been closed. We've seen the impact that this has had, especially on women with children. Spaces uh, that are culturally appropriate and distinctions based for indigenous children are needed now more than ever before. Et comme Larry vient de le mentionner, cela a été particulièrement difficile pour les mamans. And this has been particularly difficult on mothers. And we recognize that. Since 2017, our government has invested over $9.6 million as part of bilateral agreements on early learning and childcare with the Yukon Territory. This has led to more affordable and high quality childcare spaces being available to Yukoners. Ce travail était important et a contribué à nous amener là où nous sommes aujourd'hui. That work was important and it helped us to get us to where we are today. Simply put, we also heard directly from parents from coast to coast to coast, including the Yukon, and they've made it very clear to both orders of government that we had to do more that we had to build on the strong foundation, uh, but that more was needed, more affordability, more uh, quality, more accessibility and inclusivity. So we decided to step up, and that leads us to the reason why we're here today. This announcement simply builds on that strong foundation and the progress that we've made together, as well as the significant progress made by the Yukon when you introduced a universal childcare system earlier this year. 
And I have to tell you, as the federal minister responsible for early learning and childcare, when I heard that Yukon had presented that ambitious plan, I was excited because you were setting the standard. You were showing ambition, and you were uh, showing that uh, more and better is always possible. At the end of the day, having strong partners like you on the table makes a real difference for our kids. And it is exactly what Canadians expect us to do. They expect us to work together to help them throughout this pandemic and to help them ensure uh, that they find themselves in a strong, inclusive, sustainable economic recovery. And central to that is early learning and childcare. We all want the same kind of Canada that ensures that everyone has a fair and equal chance at success. And that is what Budget 2021 sets out to do. I know that a Canada-wide system of early learning and childcare that delivers affordable, inclusive, high quality and accessible childcare is a very ambitious goal. But if we're telling our own kids to dream big, we need to make sure that they can turn their own dreams into reality. And the best way to do that is to give them the best possible start in life. In addition to that, uh, an affordable Canada-wide early learning and childcare system is also good for parents. It's good particularly for women with children who intend to not be forced to, have, to make a choice between mm -hmm. going to work or taking care of their kids. Just a few weeks ago, we announced an early learning and childcare agreement, a Canada-wide agreement with British Columbia, followed very shortly after by Nova Scotia. And that's, again, what Canadians expect us to do. They expect us to work with provinces and territories, and quite frankly, the nonprofit sector, the private sector, and all stakeholders to make sure that we're delivering on these uh, priorities for Canadians. I finally want to turn it over to our outstanding Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, the Honourable Christia Freeland. Christia, you've been a strong champion for families, for children, for housing, and for early learning and childcare. You understand the important connection between having access to affordable childcare and having a strong and robust and inclusive economy. Your recent budget reflected uh, a smart economic approach of making sure that no one is left behind. That's precisely what Canadians are looking at us to do, so that as we recover from this pandemic, this unprecedented challenge, we do so in a, in a strong, resilient, green, but inclusive manner. So thank you, Christia. And personally, I have to say that uh, I can't imagine making this announcement today without your assistance and your help and your leadership. You have been invaluable in getting us to this point. You have had the vision of making sure that our budget was ambitious enough to meet uh, the dreams and aspirations of kids and families across Canada. And I really, really want to thank you for doing everything that you can to make sure that every single child in Canada has access to affordable, high quality, inclusive and accessible childcare. So thank you, thank you, merci beaucoup. And thank you, Minister McLean, and thank you to Larry Bagnell for being such a strong voice for the Yukon. The reason why I keep making announcements in Yukon is in large part to your advocacy and your strong voice. And Premier Silver, you have a fine member of parliament and a minister as well here uh, who uh, I've been working very closely with. And it's been a joy and a pleasure. And today's announcement, uh, which I'll turn it over to Christia, is a reflection of that. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. OK. Uh well, first of all, thank you so much, Ahmed, for that very kind introduction. Ahmed and I work really, really closely together uh, on a number of issues. And we have been working really, really closely on early learning and childcare. In fact, from before the budget was tabled, it was our close work together on the budget that got us to making this ambitious commitment. Uh, and I really want to thank you, Larry. Um, it was very nice to hear you saying at the beginning 
that Ahmed has been visiting you often and that I have been accessible to. And if there has been a lot of ministerial attention to the Yukon, and I think there has, um, it is first and foremost because of you, Larry, and your hard work in Parliament and in caucus, and uh, really your outstanding advocacy for your community. Uh, I really wish I could be with you guys in Whitehorse. Uh, at least by Northern standards, uh, my hometown of Peace River is not that far away from you. And I have many precious childhood memories of visits to Whitehorse. Uh, and I hope to get there again soon. But instead, I am joining you virtually from Fredericton, New Brunswick, uh, where I have been making other announcements. Um, so COVID-19 has exposed something that women have long known. Without childcare, parents, and it's usually mothers, cannot work. The closing of our schools and childcare centers drove women's participation in the labor force down to its lowest level in two decades. Early learning and childcare has long been a feminist issue. COVID has shown us all that it is also an urgent economic issue. In our April budget, the federal government committed to spending $30 billion over five years with $9.2 billion annually in permanent funding after that to make the long held dream of a universal high quality and accessible early learning and childcare system across Canada, a reality. We committed to working collaboratively in partnership with provinces and territories. We committed to building a system that will give young families access to affordable, inclusive, flexible, and high quality childcare. This policy on early learning and child care is so important for me as finance minister because it delivers a jobs and growth hat trick. By allowing both mothers and fathers to work, it increases labor force participation and that helps our economy to grow. It creates good, high quality, well-paid jobs for early learning and childcare educators who are mostly women. And critically, this system is going to help us together to raise an outstanding generation of smarter, better educated Canadian children who are all gonna get the best possible start in life. As Larry said, this social infrastructure is as essential as hard physical infrastructure. An early learning and child care center is as important for the economic health and prosperity of a community as a bridge or a road is. This is feminist economic policy. This is smart economic policy. On budget day, I made a promise to Canadians that as your finance minister and as a working mother, I would work together with my colleagues to get this done. And so I am so proud today to be announcing that the federal government has reached a landmark agreement with the government of Yukon to deliver affordable, high quality childcare for Yukon families. Through this agreement, the government of Canada will contribute nearly $42 million over five years to build on Yukon's own exceptional efforts to deliver an average of $10 a day childcare to families with children under age six. Our governments will work together to rapidly expand access to quality, affordable, flexible, and inclusive early learning and childcare programs. This funding will create 110 new regulated early learning and child care spaces within five years. 
This funding will also support and grow a skilled workforce of early learning and child care educators. It will give them opportunities for professional development and support a minimum wage of nearly $30 an hour for early learning and child care educators, the highest minimum wage for early childhood educators in the country. We have also committed to work collaboratively with Yukon First Nations to ensure that Indigenous children will have access to affordable, high quality, and culturally appropriate early learning and child care. J'ai le plaisir de vous annoncer aujourd'hui que le gouvernement fédéral a conclu une entente historique avec le gouvernement du Yukon pour offrir aux familles yukonaises des services de garde d'enfants abordables et de haute qualité. Dans le cadre de cette entente, le gouvernement du Canada versera près de 42 millions de dollars sur cinq ans pour appuyer les efforts déployés par le Yukon afin d'offrir des services de garde d'enfants à 10 dollars par jour en moyenne aux familles ayant des enfants de moins de 6 ans. I could not be prouder of the collaborative work we have done already to deliver this transformative support to families across Canada. Yukon today becomes the third jurisdiction following BC and Nova Scotia to take an incredible step forward for a childcare system, a universal system across Canada. And I am looking forward to being able to speak about agreements with more provinces and territories soon. Ahmed is working very, very hard. And I really want to thank Ahmed, Minister Hussein, for all his work to make today's announcement happen. I also want to take a moment to thank Premier Silver, to thank you, Sandy, for being a leader on this issue, for working so personally to make this agreement, today's announcement possible. And I really want to recognize that early learning and child care is a priority for you and for your government. And as Ahmed said, your leadership Yukon's leadership on this issue really allowed the federal government to be even more ambitious and to support the work you're doing in the Yukon and to be ambitious for the whole country. And of course, Minister McLean, I'd like to recognize the hard work you have been doing on this issue. Uh, it's just great to be here virtually with all of you. And most importantly, it is great to be announcing this agreement that is going to help so many Yukon families and so many young little Yukoners. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland will now hand it over to uh, Premier Silver. Thanks, Matthew. And uh, thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, Dern Hozo, everybody. Uh, and greetings from the traditional territory of the, of the Trondequichin here in beautiful Dawson City, Yukon. Uh, I'm extremely proud and happy to be here for today's announcement with uh, my good friend, the Deputy Prime Minister Freeland, uh, joining us virtually, uh, and also Minister Hussein, um, with uh, Larry Bagnall, Yukon's MP, and of course, Minister Jeannie McLean, uh, Yukon's Minister of Education, uh, and everybody else who's here uh, able to announce us. Thank you very much for your time today, listening to this very, very important announcement. A key priority for our government has been implementing a universal early learning and childcare program that's accessible, that's affordable, uh, inclusive, high quality, and available all across the Yukon. An important part of this is making sure that we foster the professional recognition and development of early childhood educators who, who play a, vi a, a, a vital role in supporting our children and our families in their earliest years of development and growth. Now, over the last year and a half, we, uh, as we have uh, had to deal with the new challenges uh, during the pandemic, the essential and 
critical importance of our child care system, uh, along with the significant contributions of all of the early childhood educators and the, uh, the, the child care staffs, that, that has been even more apparent. Um, by supporting families with universal child care, we are making lives more affordable for Yukon families, helping parents to re-enter the workforce and charter the path towards uh, pandemic recovery. And as we continue to further develop a more robust and inclusive universal child care system, we are thrilled, absolutely thrilled, to be supported by the Government of Canada with this historic $41.6 million agreement. The Canada-Yukon Early Learning and Child Care Agreement will see us create 500 more licensed child care spaces than we already did in 2019 over a five-year term with this agreement. Now, we're well on our way of achieving this goal already. We have created nearly 400 new spaces since 2019. Canada's investment in early learning and child care for Yukon will help us maintain affordable fees for parents, which in Yukon, as uh, Christia mentioned, are now amongst the lowest in Canada since we've introduced our affordable child care program this spring. With this support, this is going to help us to increase supports for early childhood educators, to expand local training and career development opportunities, both for current and future early childhood educators. It's gonna to continue to improve the overall quality of learning programs for children and provide better individual and inclusive support for children with additional needs. Uh, it's going to increase and enhance programs that directly support vulnerable children in Yukon. And last but certainly not least, it's going to help us to develop and offer more culturally inclusive programming for children. With this agreement, we will be able to not only continue, but enhance our collaborative work with First Nations, the Yukon University, and the Government of Canada to support training and career development for members of the Yukon communities in health and social service program delivery. I can't stress enough how important strong educational supports in childcare are for the success and prosperity of all Yukoners. And the Canada Yukon Early Learning and Child Care Agreement will truly make a difference. As, as an educator myself and, and currently a, a Minister of Finance, I know only too well the importance of professional early learning to the lifelong impacts um, uh, to, to, you, to Yukoners of this critical investment. So in closing, I just wanna really sincerely thank the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Christia, you, you have worked so hard on this. We have talked so many times on this. Uh, our, you know, our communication has been uh, crystal clear and, and, and uh, it's been going on for, for a long time on this. Minister uh, Hussein and, uh, and Minister McLean, the work that your two departments have done collaboratively to get us to here, uh, it's, it's truly remarkable. Uh, I just really wanna thank everybody for, uh, for their blood, sweat, and tears, it's been it's been absolutely a pleasure working with the federal government on this, and and uh, today uh, for the government of Canada's commitment uh, to supporting Yukon families, I can't thank you enough. So, with that, uh, thank you, Masicho, Ganeshish, Chonitan. Thank you, Premier Silver. I'll now hand it over to our Minister of Education, uh, Jeannie McLean. Thank, thank you so much, and it's so great to be here with all of you today on the traditional territory of the Kwan Lindan First Nation and Ta'an Kwachan Council, and to welcome Minister Hussein here. Thank you so much for coming to, to be with us and um, for uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland for joining us today, and of course my um, colleague and um, great leader that I get to work with every day, um, Premier Silver, and uh, our MP Larry Bagnall, I, he um, is, thank you so much for talking about how important of an advocate he is for Yukon and um, I thank you very much Larry for all that you do and, um, and I hope that Yukoners will um, always appreciate the leadership that we have from, from you as our MP. Um, I want to thank uh, Minister Hussain for uh, the, the, you were the very first minister to call me to congratulate me, but to talk about the, um, the important files that we would work on together and this being one of the first priorities. Um, and so here we are, a short couple of months later, signing this historic uh, agreement for Yukon. 
Um, I'm not going to go through all of the details. I think folks have um, had the chance to hear from all of these great leaders and, and in terms of the importance of this. So I think I'm going to talk about um, just what this means to people in our territory. I know that um, during the election, recent election, in April, I you know went door to door and spoke to people, and you know one particular story stu stood out for me because at that time we were implementing our universal childcare, and it meant seven hundred dollars a month for each child, um, and so th this young mom she was expecting her third child, and she said this announcement that you, you've made and that you were moving towards implementing means that I don't have to leave my job, that I'm going to continue in my career. And and it, it was that meaningful. So I think that providing access to affordable childcare, quality childcare is absolutely essential. Um, I'm also the minister responsible for the women's directorate. And so I know that um, women have been impacted disproportionately um, through the pandemic. And um, this investment is exactly where we need to go as a country worldwide. This is where we need to go. And we sat uh, with leaders from around the world at the um, at different sessions that I had with Minister Monsef talking about the impact on women. Um, one of the, um, the advice that we re received from leaders around the world is to invest, invest in early childcare and quality childcare. And I was so proud at that time to say, we are doing exactly that in the Yukon and we're working with our federal partners in Canada to, um, to enhance that. And that's what this, this um, announcement today, the $41.6 million will do for Yukon. It's going to help us continue the good work that we've already started. Um, I, and to work with all of our partners, and we have so many to work with in terms of um, continuing with our federal partners, but also working with Yukon First Nations and operators around the territory. I've had my, a chance to go and talk with folks around the Yukon. Um, not every community yet, but I will get there. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of excitement. And so I... Um, just want to again thank you, Minister, for coming to be here um, to sign this historic agreement with me today. I look forward to continuing to work with Canada um, and our First Nation partners and other partners um, as we continue to build. It's only going to get better from here. I wanted just to uh, thank all of our, our officials as well for all of the hard work that they did. Um, uh, Acting Deputy Minister of Education, Kelly Taylor, for her leadership over the last, especially several weeks. Um, Betty Burns and Colin McDonald. Uh, now I know so many other folks um, worked hard to, to get us to where we are today. Um, so I thank you and um, really acknowledge the hard work and passion that you've put into this. Um, I wanna just end by um, talking about uh, a, a young woman when we were really first starting to plan universal childcare, she, uh, she's a young mom, single mom, with several young children, all really very young. And um, I was talking to her about this commitment that we were making. And she said, this is so important, so vitally important to, to me as a, as a young mom, she said, what it's going, it allows me to dream again, to be able to think about my future in a different way. And so I always keep that with me, that comment is an important one. That's what this agreement symbolizes to me today is allowing people to dream again and to be able to live in an affordable way. Um, so on that, thank you, and thank you very much, Gunta Business, for coming to provide technical support for us today to connect us all together. It's, uh, it's really great. Um, so thank you. 
Thank you so much, Minister McLean. Uh, it is wonderful to have you here along with Minister Hussein, and I'd like to invite you to uh, sit down and uh, sign this historic agreement. As the agreement signed, I'd just like to once again thank all of our speakers today, the Honorable Christia Freeland, Deputy Prime Minister of Canada and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Sandy Silver, Premier of the Yukon, the Honorable Ahmed Hussein, Minister of Families, Children and Social Development and Minister Responsible for the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, and the Honorable Jeannie McLean, Minister of Education for the Yukon. We also have Larry Bagnell here, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Economic Development and Official Languages and Member of Parliament for Yukon, who started us off today. We will move into our uh, question and answer uh, section with the media in just a moment. Thank you. So we will start with uh, our local reporters here uh, in the room, and I'll start with Luke McGraw from CKRW. Thank you. Uh, this is a question for Minister McLean. Uh, one of the parts of this investment that uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland discussed was getting minimum wages uh, for staff in childcare facilities up to close to $30 an hour. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering your thoughts on this investment not only being uh, towards families and children, but also in just uh, everyday working individuals in, in the Yukon as well. Mm -hmm. uh, thank, you, thank you very much for the question. I think that um, our child care providers have been underpaid for a long time and I think they have um, uh, the most important job caring for our most precious our, our children and I think that um, this uh, increasing the wage to a minimum of $30 is long overdue I think they do provide important um, uh, services to us as uh, Yukoners, and I am thrilled that um, they're going to be compensated in the way that they should for the professional work that they do. 
Thank you. Thanks, Luke. Uh, each reporter will get one question, one follow-up, uh, but that was Luke's only question, so we'll now move to Julian Jignac with uh, CBC. Um, hi, uh, Julian Jignac with CBC. Um, I just have two questions, one of which is a bit of a non sequitur, um, probably best answered by the Premier. But I first wanted to ask, um, specific to this agreement, uh, there was mention of making early child care and child care more inclusive for Yukon First Nations. Mm -hmm. It would be great to know how that's going to happen. So why don't we start there? Mm -hmm. Well, um, our uh, good question. Thank you very much for the question. I think that um, you know, we've worked really hard to establish good uh, relationships with Yukon First Nations and our intent is to collaborate closely with Yukon First Nations in terms of further development of um, uh, centers or spaces within their communities. I know that there's work going on as I speak in several of our uh, Yukon communities, particularly with First Nations, that will result in, uh, again, affordable, accessible, high quality childcare. And um, we, uh, I know that local media are aware that we have a Yukon Forum that happens on a, a, a quarterly basis. And education, childcare, um, are, these are priorities for our government and our, our, one of our most enduring priorities has been rebuilding our relationship with um, Yukon First Nations during our last mandate and as we go forward. So I think that at this point, you know, we um, will work in a, in a way that supports what First Nations need. To, to do within their own communities. And uh, again, huge priority for me as a minister to ensure that we have inclusive, inclusive programming for all. I would just add to that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Minister McLean uh, hit the nail on the head when it comes to how important the Yukon Forum is on these conversations. But um, I have to say some of the best uh, uh, childcare in Yukon uh, comes out of First Nations governments now. Uh, Trinky Zoe here in Dawson City is unbelievable. Uh, the professionalism, uh, the quality uh, of, of care, uh, the education system, the Head Starts programming, uh, it's amazing. So anything that we can do to partner and collaborate, and now with this uh, increased funding from the federal government, uh, you just have three, uh, three governments, uh, First Nations governments, uh, our own territorial government and the federal government collaborating together to make sure that each community uh, has less and less gaps in services, less and less uh, disparities when it comes to that professionalism. So we're thrilled to continue the partnership with Yukon Forum and uh, today's announcement from the federal government is just that extra boost that we need to make sure that that quality investment continues on a long term basis. The other question I had pertains specifically to the pandemic and gradually reopening. Um, and it, as you mentioned yourselves, uh, you know, it's been hard on, on families and mothers and we're entering into a phase of recovery. Um, the largest First Nation in Yukon, Kwanlin Dunn, uh, Doris Bill, the chief says it's too soon to, to reopen. Uh, the trigger has been pulled far too soon. Um, it's a mistake to let unvaccinated travelers into the Yukon without requiring them to self-isolate. Um, I'd like to ask the Premier how he would like to respond to that, and if he would, please. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we've been working hand in glove with First Nations. Uh, the, the level of connectivity between the Chief Medical Officer uh, of Health, his office, his team, uh, our government, First Nations governments, uh, has been moving along you know, through this pandemic, uh, and I think probably the best system I've seen uh, in Canada. Um, we will continue to follow the advice from the medical community. Uh, we have the highest vaccination rate in Canada. Um, the, the, the supply chain management, the, the, uh, uh, the traffic that comes up uh, on a regular basis, 
regardless of uh, where we are with self-isolating for individuals, uh, the medical community has said the increase in that traffic is not going to be the concerning factor. The concerning factor is in communities and, uh, and folks gathering where they shouldn't and in, in ways that they shouldn't as well. So as we lead Canada in the vaccination rates, and I want to thank the federal government as well for uh, prioritizing northern rural and indigenous communities, um, this is where we need to be now. Uh, we're at a place where you have a majority of your population vaccinated. It's time to move away from restrictions. It's time to continue the dialogue, continue the leadership that the First Nations chiefs and councils and mayors and councils through every single community have really stepped up. Uh, and now the onus is on uh, social responsibility, personal responsibility, uh, leadership in the communities to make sure that our vaccination rates are there. Everybody who can get vaccinated does so that those who can't get vaccinated uh, are in a more healthy place and a more safe place. Uh, but the days of restrictions from governments right across the world are going to come out. And what we're going to see is a pivot as a pandemic becomes an endemic of equal uh, responsibility in those communities. And, and we're just thrilled with the level of communication that we have with the First Nations chiefs, and we'll continue down that road of uh, um, keeping the, the information flowing. Um, and again, we'll continue to move based upon the best medical advice uh, from the Chief Medical Officer of Health. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Julian. <laughs> We will now go to uh, Dylan McNeil with Shona Femme. Dylan, are you there? We may have uh, lost Dylan. We'll circle back. Uh, Haley Ritchie with the Yukon News. Please go ahead. Hello, Haley Ritchie from the Yukon News. Thank you. Hope you can hear me okay. Uh, my question um, probably aimed towards the minister or the premier, but there was discussion there about creating new child care spaces, um, which is obviously important to make sure parents can actually access child care. Um, I'm wondering if you could break down a little bit uh, how this money will be used to create new spaces. Is that infrastructure funding? Is that just um, acquiring more staff? Or just a bit of a breakdown of, of how new spaces can be created with this funding. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for the question, Haley. Um, yeah, exactly that. I mean, we're working with communities. We're working with um, uh, different operators. There's a number of um, folks that are uh, planning centers right now throughout the, the territory. And so um, and we think we can meet our goal. I mean, we, the goal was to create 500 spaces. We've already created a number of those. And so within what's left in the agreement is to to get to another 110 spaces so um, we are working with a number of groups um, that are planning um, there's also for not-for-profit and yukon will continue to support startup costs for for-profit um, daycares as well so within this agreement um, the the new federal funding will help us to continue to create spaces for uh, the not-for-profit and first nations and and day homes so um, that's uh, it, it's we have a an incredible team of um, uh, folks that work within the Edu Department of Education who are working closely with all of our communities to ensure that we are um, communicating with them and creating the opportunities and helping to support them. Um, I've sat in some of those meetings myself on a personal level to um, hear from uh, communities that are planning uh, uh, new centers or expansion of centers and um, that's, yeah, it's, it, it's exciting to, to see the um, the uptake already, and and it's again, it's only this is just a start. I think that we'll definitely meet our. Um, I know we'll meet our our obligation within this agreement fairly fairly quick. Thanks, Haley. Do you have a follow up? Um, I did. Yeah, my follow up. This might have been answered during the press conference. If so, I apologize, but. Um, the subsidy that was announced earlier in the year, 
only applied to licensed child care spots. Um, I just want to confirm that that's still the case with the $10 a day. It'll be for licensed spots? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Thanks, Haley. Uh, we'll now go to Tim Gillick with the Whitehorse Star. Yes, good morning, or good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yep. All right, I, I only have one question. I'm wondering how soon this uh, money begins to flow uh, and can be applied to uh, the daycare? Uh, the, so we just signed the agreement and uh, the, uh, the, the money will begin to flow um, as soon as possible. The, uh, this is money that has been allocated as part of budget 2021 and uh, 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 Parliament has approved uh, the, the Budget Implementation Act. So uh, we, are, we are going full steam ahead and once the agreement is signed, which we just did, uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're going right ahead to, uh, to release those dollars so that Yukon can uh, create more spaces and more opportunities for Yukon kids and families. Mm -hmm. I think I'll just add to that that again, you know, we um, introduced uh, universal child care and put we have the infrastructure, the structures in place um, since April 1st. So now we'll continue to build on that. Yeah. So we're not creating uh, a program from scratch. We have uh, we have a system and a program already in place, and so this really enhances that. Absolutely. Thanks, Tim. We will now go to uh, Vincent Bonnet with Radio Canada. Okay, we might have uh, lost him off the call. Uh, I'll move to Kevin Gallagher. Hello, thank you for taking my question. Uh, it is for the Deputy Prime Minister, Christian Freeland. Um, there, um, of course, Norwegian Cruise Lines has you know, said that it's not going to accept people who have mixed and matched vaccines. They want guests who have had one cycle of, say, AstraZeneca or Pfizer. Uh, so even, you know, Pfizer Moderna mixes are being rejected. Um, you know, what guarantees or assurances can the government provide to Canadians who are following public health advice and getting vaccinated uh, with the first dose that's available, mixing and matching, that they won't have difficulties moving forward when it comes to um, certain restrictions put on uh, people who have had mix and, max, mix and matched regimes. Thank you. Uh, which is I am one of many Canadians uh, who has had uh, who has been double vaccinated and I want to urge everyone to get your two doses as Sandy said earlier that's the best thing we can do to protect each other to protect ourselves and to allow the Canadian economy to come roaring back. I am also one of the many Canadians who has received mixed doses. My first dose was AstraZeneca and my second dose was Moderna. Uh, and I just really want to assure Canadians that uh, that uh, advice from public health authorities and subsequent decision by provinces and territories to allow people to get mixed doses was absolutely science-based. Um, there's some scientific research that actually suggests that uh, having mixed doses may even give you superior protection. So we feel very, very confident in following the advice of our scientists. Uh, that has been the Government of Canada's approach from the outset, and it has been absolutely the right approach. And just on a very personal level, let me say, as Finance Minister, I attended the G20 meeting uh, in Italy earlier this month, and there was certainly recognition of my double vaccination status there with the mixed doses. I think that we've seen in the United States and other jurisdictions that 
this pandemic is quickly becoming uh, a pandemic for the unvaccinated. Um, what more can the government do in terms of encouraging uh, the people who haven't had a dose at all to get vaccinated or for people to sign up and get their second doses as quickly as possible? Is there any other resources or help the federal government can provide to provinces to ensure that, you know, Canada doesn't get caught up in another wave of infections uh, that sweeps through unvaccinated populations? Uh, we are seeing a slow increase right now in many parts of the country uh, in terms of new cases, even today. Minister, probably the single issue that preoccupies me the most is vaccination and is the rise of Delta variant that we are seeing in some countries. So really, I think there is nothing more important that we can do as a country, that we can do as individual people, that we can do as members of our own communities, than to go out and get vaccinated if we are not vaccinated already, and to encourage everyone around us who may not be yet fully vaccinated to go and get vaccinated. So it's a really important question, uh, and I hope you'll ask it at every press conference, and I really think we just need to keep on pushing. The good news is that uh, Canadians are really smart. And I don't say that just as a proud Canadian and a proud Canadian minister. That is a fact. Uh, Canadians are the best educated people in all of the OECD. And I think we are seeing that reflected in the very high levels of vaccination in our country. Uh, Canada is already very, very close to leading the G20 when it comes not only to first doses, but also to second doses. So we're doing really well. I attribute that to the excellence and intelligence of Canadians and to how community minded they are. Uh, but I also agree with you, we need to keep on pushing. We just heard Sandy, uh, Premier of the Yukon, talking about his efforts to get those already high vaccination levels even higher. I had a conversation just before this announcement uh, with a provincial finance minister talking about the efforts, that, talking among other things about the efforts that his province was making to further push up vaccination rates, efforts to reach vulnerable communities, communities that may not yet have all the information they need about the vaccine. And then of course, uh, our government provided in the budget $1 billion to go directly to provinces and territories to support the vaccination effort. Thank you. Uh, we'll now go to George Moratis with CBC. Do you have any questions about today's announcement, George? Okay, we might have lost George. I will circle back one time for Dylan McNeil with Shona FM. Have you rejoined Dylan? And uh, Vincent Bonnet? Okay, uh, I believe that's all of the uh, reporters we have uh, joining us today. So with that, I'd like to thank all of our uh, speakers and everyone uh, who made today's announcement possible. Uh, thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.